Hey my friends, this is Sylvie Curry, Lady of Q. Once again, I'm in my kitchen. Today, I'm gonna to be cooking some corned beef. And mainly because I want a Reuben sandwich. I just had the strong taste for a Reuben sandwich. This time of year, there's lots of corned beef in the supermarkets and at a pretty good price. So I decided to go ahead and do this so I can make my own Reuben with corned beef. What I purchased was, this is a three pound cut, and it says it's a point cut. This comes off of the brisket of, of cow. It says it's a point cut, but I looked at it and thought, wow, must have been an awfully big cow to have a nice thick piece of point that looks like that. It actually looks more like flat than it does a point. But Label point cut, so I have to take their word for it. The package for this corned beef already has a lot of the pickling spices in it. And I decided that I was going to add a few more just to make it a little bit more intense. So I'm also going to take about a tablespoon of pickling spices. And you can buy pickling spices at your grocery store. And this is, as I said, about a tablespoon. And I'm also going to be adding oh, about three cloves of garlic to it. And I've got water. And this is six cups of water, but I only need to put enough water in my pressure cooker in order to cover the corned beef. And we're going to go ahead and cook this baby. I've got a rack in my pressure cooker that I've put the corned beef on. And you don't have to have a rack, but I just decided I was going to do that. Now, in some of the recipes that you'll read, they'll say that you should wash off the corned beef because it's very, very salty. However, keep in mind, because you're putting a lot of water in it, it's going to get sort of washed off anyway. Inside the, the pack that the corned beef came in, there's still some juices and things like that. And in the past, what I've done is actually just taken some water and flushed that out and added it to the corned beef just for the flavoring that's there. I'm going to take our pickling spices, add that in, along with the garlic. Then I'm going to take my water, pour it off in there. And because I've got that rack in there, it is going to take a little bit more water than six cups. So I've got an additional eight cups of water. I don't think it's going to take that amount, but we'll pour that in there. And we'll get the water to cover the corned beef. That's all we have to make sure we do. And there it is. So I've got my corned beef in the pressure cooker with the garlic and the additional pickling spices. I'm going to set this for, on the meat selection on my pressure cooker, and the maximum it goes up to is about an hour. And what I'll do after an hour in the natural release time, I'll go back and check for tenderness and see how it's doing. If it needs additional time, I'll put it on it. If it's done, it's good to go. I'll put the lid in the pressure cooker, put it in the lock position, make sure that it's on the closed off vent. Then I'm going to set it on the meat chicken cycle for one hour and we'll let that go and then we'll come back and check it. I'm going to do a natural release on this so that it'll go for a little bit more than an hour but once again we'll see what happens at that time period. Reuben sandwiches typically have a sauce. Sometimes it can be a Russian dressing or a Thousand Island dressing. I'm going to prepare a sauce which is sort of like a cloth or blend between the two. Not quite the same. I don't have any horseradish that I'm going to put in it, nor am I going to put any lemon in this. Instead, I'm using, I have a half a cup of mayonnaise. I have five tablespoons of sriracha ketchup. I have three tablespoons of minced dill pickle, not sweet relish, but dill relish. 
I also have a tablespoon of minced onion, a teaspoon of mustard, and a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to combine all these ingredients very simply, just adding them to my, my bowl. And just making sure that I mix it up. This is going to be twangy. I like my vegan sandwiches twangy. No sweet for me. And that sriracha is going to give it a nice little kick. Sriracha mayo. Very simply made. A cross between a Thousand Island dressing and a Russian dressing to make a Reuben sandwich. And this is going to be corned beef. And you see it's a nice salmon type color. Pretty. And I'll let that sit aside and let those flavors melt so by the time we get ready to do our Reuben, it will be good to go. The other ingredients that will be a part of this Reuben sandwich are sauerkraut. And you can't have a Reuben without sauerkraut. That's just not a Reuben. And I have it in the strainer so that it can drip and get a lot of that moisture out of it so it won't be too wet. I've got some dry bread that I'm going to be using. This is the dressing of the sauce that I made earlier. And I don't have any Swiss cheese, but I am going to use Gouda. And that's going to go in the sandwiches. Tonight I'm also going to be serving a Greek-inspired salad. Included will be lettuce, tomato, radishes, got some artichoke hearts in there, and green onions. And I also have some feta cheese on the side and some Greek, a Greek vignette. My setup to cook the Reuben sandwiches includes two cast iron type skillets. And what I'm going to do is I've got my rye bread and I'm going to butter both sides actually. And then I'll grill both sides just to get the butter incorporated. And from there I will be putting on the dressing, the Russian Thousand Island style dressing. I have the corned beef is still cooking, so it won't be ready for just a teensy weensy bit. I've also got my sauerkraut and my cheese. I've got that cheese covered up, don't I? The corned beef is out of the pressure cooker, and I'm just go, going to go through and cut off all this excess fat. The total time that I had this corned beef in the pressure cooker was a little longer than I had anticipated. I put it through two, two cycles, so a total of, was that 60 plus 20? That's 80, 80 minutes on a pressure cycle. I'm gonna slice this up. It's nice and tender. It's looking good. Corned beef. To start, I'm going to Turn on my fire, I put it on medium, a little less than medium, and I'm going to butter each side. And this is actually clarified butter or ghee. And I'll put it on both sides to start. All the means of making this very decadent. And 
And at the same time that I'm getting my bread to toast up, I'm going to warm up the sauerkraut. I'm going to be very careful with it because I don't want it to dry out. So my rye bread is heated up on the first side, so I'm going to sauce it on both sides. And I'm probably going to wind up adding more of this sauce when I get to putting the corned beef on. I'll add my cheese. I'm also going to grill my corned beef, even though it's already warm, just to get some color on it. This goes so very fast. And I'm going to put my corned beef on the bread. Put a layer of the sauerkraut. I'm also going to top that with a little bit more of the sauce. Then we'll top it, and once it's browned, I'll flip it over very carefully. Yeah, okay, I just want you all to assure that the, the cheese melts. That was a good turn. My corned beef ribbon is now ready. Doesn't that just look yummy? corned beef, we got that Gouda cheese, sauerkraut, butter, and that Russian Thousand Island style sauce. There you have it. Reuben. Corned beef Reuben. Ooey gooey. Corn beef, Reuben.